The man on the right is Thomas David West. He grew up in the Cincinnati suburb of Erlinger, Kentucky. He went on in life to have everything you could ask for in a doctor. He was punctual, well-dressed, glib, and he dispensed pharmaceuticals and performed outpatient surgery with a competent air that reassures any hospital patient. Well, he had everything you could ask for in a doctor except one thing, a diploma. In fact, the evidence shows he never finished college at all and he certainly never had a medical degree. But for 14 months, in 1990 and 1991, West, then in his early 30s, impersonated a doctor as he regularly roamed four hospitals in Cincinnati, donning medical scrubs, carrying stethoscopes and fake IDs while performing outpatient procedures, injecting people with medicines, and making false prescriptions. Sometimes he would arrange to meet up with people at a particular hospital after getting to know them in restaurants or learning of their ailments somewhere else. Other times West would enter emergency rooms and patients rooms in the hospitals to seek out his victims. The fake doctor also lured some unsuspecting people to what he told them was a clinic but which was actually part of an apartment he shared with a girlfriend. There and at Cincinnati's Good Samaritan, Christ, University, and Jewish hospitals, West performed procedures that are known to have included two pap smears and the testing of a leg lesion with a medicated cream and an unidentified type of acid. The game was finally up in August 1991 when West was arrested for allegedly stealing traveler's checks from one of the people receiving his treatments. And that person just happened to be a police officer. The officer's investigation that ensued blew the lid off the 32-year-old West's bogus medical practices. Though all of the people that he considered patients consented to the procedures, his lack of a medical school education changed everything. The pap smears got him charged with two counts of gross sexual imposition, and the lesion treatment resulted in charges of felonious assault. West's list of charges also included making false prescriptions, practicing medicine without a license, the use of a scalpel on one person and of a hypodermic needle on two others, trespassing at one of the hospitals, and it wasn't just the police officer who was the alleged victim of West's thievery. He was also charged with stealing $11,000 from the girlfriend with whom he shared the apartment, who knew nothing of any of West's illegal activities. I was working as a reporter and editor for the Associated Press during the early 1990s, and I edited some broadcast stories about the Thomas West matter, and they went far and wide quickly on the National Wire. Even Johnny Carson referred to the Thomas West case in one of his late night monologues. But it was the two daily newspapers, the Cincinnati Inquirer and the Cincinnati Post, that began doing the deep digging on the story of Thomas West the moment his arrest broke. And the more the reporters dug, the stranger the story of Thomas David West became. The newspapers found that West, who had changed his legal name from Thomas Weithalter a few years after graduating from Holmes High School in Covington, Kentucky in 1976, had worked as a police dispatcher in nearby Florence, Kentucky from age 21 to 25. He resigned for unspecified personal reasons, but his departure followed complaints that he had passed himself off in public as a police officer and displayed other bizarre behavior on the job. During his time as a dispatcher, West seemed to undergo an identity change, talking and walking in the manner of a particular Florence police officer. The chief wouldn't identify that officer, but said West's fixation was so strong that he actually bought a car like that driven by the officer. So what was the home life of this supposed doctor like? 
Between 1980 and 91, West married and divorced twice, had no children with either wife, but had two children with a third woman with whom he lived while he was either single or separated. The newspapers identified her as Sandra Murray West, but did not indicate whether she changed her name because of their cohabitation or whether the name was pre-existing. The couple's second child was born after West had moved out of the residence he and Sandra West shared. Even though he had proposed what would have been his third marriage to another woman before the second child was born, Thomas West moved back in with Sandra West and both of their children and soon moved with them to another Northern Kentucky apartment shortly before he was arrested. On 1988 records of his second divorce, Thomas West listed his occupation as physician and his age as 38. He was in fact 29 and had never studied medicine, but the Cincinnati Enquirer interviewed several people who recalled West during that period, telling them he was a doctor. On his first filing for divorce in 1983, West listed his occupation as psychoanalyst. And for four Cincinnati hospitals, nationwide reports that an imposter with no medical training had unfettered access to innocent people's most personal realms brought the public image catastrophe of CEO's nightmares. But Good Samaritan, Christ, University of Cincinnati, and Jewish hospitals seemed to adopt a PR strategy of downplay this gigantic breach of safety and dignity, perhaps out of concern for civil lawsuits that were certain to be filed and which were. Spokespersons for two of those hospitals told the Associated Press that they saw no reason to change basic safety procedures and that the use of security cameras and the locking of drug cabinets were sufficient. Nancy Strassel, a spokeswoman for the Greater Cincinnati Hospital Council, also exuded ice water in the veins, telling media that the 34 hospitals in the Cincinnati area were not exceedingly troubled by the revelation of West's charade. She said security at hospitals is something that's continually monitored, but she didn't see any one policy that needed to change. One absolute change was Thomas West's residency. He was sentenced to three years in a prison in Lima, Ohio, after pleading guilty to 12 charges in October 1991 in return for prosecutors agreeing to drop 13 other charges. Three years later, the state courts in Ohio ruled that one of the four hospitals, the then state-owned University Hospital, was 60% liable for the damage to three of West's victims. The exact awards would be determined later. More than one person, including a police officer in Northern Kentucky who was a friend of West's family, told media they had known of West's claim to be a doctor and had suspected that it was false. Whereas they probably deserve some slack for not being able to fathom just how false Thomas West's life had been, no such thing can be said about the Ohio Parole Board. In late 1993, they were buying the idea that West had learned his lesson and paroled him from prison after serving 18 months of his three-year term. They were right in that he stopped faking it as a doctor, but in not much more time than it took him to drive the 200 miles home from Lima and get resettled in greater Cincinnati, the free man Thomas David West was on the phone asking two private investigators to help him weed out corruption in Kentucky politics as, wait for it, Thomas D. West, attorney at law. West told the PIs he was a lawyer with the Cincinnati-based law firm Taft, Statinius, and Hollister investigating an unnamed state senator in connection with the construction of a $20 million juvenile detention center in northern Kentucky. Though anyone who knows Kentucky politics would know you don't have to look far to find a legislator worthy of investigating, this example of corruption existed only in the toxically overactive imagination 
of Thomas David West. And because three years ago he got caught lying to untrained people such as landlords, restaurant customers, and significant others, maybe trying to fool private investigators this time would be safer. Nope, West's parole was quickly revoked. Judge John Keefe sent West back to the same prison and added six to 15 more years onto his stay there. West's tearful statement to the judge that, quote, all I ever wanted to do is help people, unquote, was of course contradicted by the harm, insecurity, stress, and mistrust that West's misdeeds inflicted on Ohio and Kentucky residents. In quite an understatement, Judge Keefe responded, you say that, but actions speak louder than words. A couple of points to help viewers avoid confusion. Northern Kentucky and Cincinnati are places of large families, and there is another person named Tom Vetholter who works as a lawyer, a real one, in Cincinnati. He went to high school in the same city of Covington, Kentucky, where the bogus lawyer and bogus doctor Tom West graduated when he was named Tom Weetholter. They are not the same person. And we couldn't bow out before explaining that the recently hired Covington City Development Director named Tom West also isn't the master of 1990s mayhem of the same name. Development Director West has been known in Northern Kentucky for many years as a leader of business organizations at the city and state level. Still, in Greater Cincinnati, when your name is Tom West or Tom Weetholter, life must get a little complicated now and then.